The Flower Adornment Sutra Archive.org Translated in the Tang Dynasty by the Tripitaka Master Sramana Shikshananda of Khotan A translation of the Avatamsaka Sutra by Thomas Cleary 1993 Note, Thomas Cleary is not a Buddhist monk Book 6 Varokana then the enlightening being universally good went on to say to the great assembly, children of Buddha, in the remote past, as many eons ago as atoms in a world, nay, even twice as long ago as that, there was an ocean of worlds called all-sided pure light. In that ocean of worlds was a world called supreme sound, which rested on a sea of nets of crystal flowers, and had as many satellite worlds as atoms in the polar mountain. It was perfectly round in shape, and its ground was replete with innumerable adornments. It had around it three hundred circles of surrounding mountains, forested with trees of myriad precious substances. It was covered by clouds of all kinds of gems. It was illumined by pure shining light. Its cities and mansions were like great high mountains. Food and clothing appeared whenever thought of. The age then was called variously adorned. In that world supreme sound was a sea of fragrant water called pure light. From the midst of that sea rose a great polar mountain of lotus flowers, called banner adorned all over with flowery flames. It was surrounded by balustrades made of ten kinds of precious elements. On the mountain was a great forest, called circle of branches with jewel flowers. Arrayed all around it were innumerable flower towers and jewel terraces. Everywhere was richly embellished with innumerable banners of exquisite fragrances. Jewel mountain pennants, and jewel lotus blossoms. Innumerable nets of aromatic crystal lotus blossoms were draped all around. There was music, harmonious and pleasing. Fragrant clouds shone. All of these were countless, impossible to fully record. There were a million billion trillion cities all around the forest, with various beings living in them. East of this forest was a huge city called Flame Light, the capital city of a human king, surrounded by a million billion trillion cities, all made of pure, beautiful jewels, each one seventy leagues long and seventy leagues wide, with walls made of seven kinds of precious substances. The armory towers to repel attackers were all high and beautifully adorned, with moats made of jewels and precious metals filled with fragrant water, with blue, red, and white lotuses, all of jewels, spread here and there as ornaments. Seven layers of jewel trees also surrounded the city. The palaces and mansions were all adorned with jewels, draped with various beautiful nets, and graced within with perfumes and scattered flowers. There were a million billion trillion gates, all decorated with jewels, with forty-nine jewel banners in front of each gate, arrayed in ranks. There were also a million billion gardens and groves all around, with various mixed scents and the fragrances of crystal trees wafting through them and perfuming everything. Myriad birds sang in harmony, a delight to the hearer. The inhabitants of this great city had all perfected the basis of mystic power as a result of what they had done. They could travel through the sky like celestial beings. Whatever they wanted came to them when they thought of it. Just south of that city was a celestial city called Adorned with Tree Blossoms. To the right of that was a great dragon city called Ultimate. Next to that was a Yaksha city called Supreme Banner of Diamonds. Next was a Gandharv city called Beautiful Palace. Next was a Titan city called Jewel Wheel. Next was a Garuda city called Array of Beautiful Jewels. Next was a Royal Brahma Heaven city called Various Wonderful Adornments. There were a million billion trillion such cities, each surrounded by a million billion trillion palaces, each with innumerable adornments. In this great forest circle of branches with jewel flowers was a sanctuary called Jewel Flowers illumining everywhere, arrayed with many huge jewels, with wreaths of crystal flowers blooming everywhere, blazing with fragrant lamps, covered by flaming clouds containing the colors of all jewels, with webs of light shining everywhere. All the ornaments constantly produced exquisite jewels, and all kinds of music played with elegant sounds. Diamonds showed the bodies of enlightening beings. 
there were various exquisite flowers everywhere. In front of that sanctuary was an ocean called Fragrant Diamonds, which produced a huge lotus flower called Flaming Circle of Flower Pistols. That flower was a hundred billion leagues across, its stem, leaves, pistols, and base were all of wonderful jewels. It was surrounded by unspeakable hundreds of thousands of billions of trillions of lotuses, constantly radiating light and emanating beautiful sound filling all directions. In the first eon of that world supreme sound as many Buddhas as atoms in ten mountains appeared in the world. The first Buddha was called Supreme Clouds on the Mountain of All Virtues. A hundred years before that Buddha was to appear in the world, all the adornments in the great forest circle of branches with jewel flowers all became pure. That is to say, they produced inconceivable numbers of clouds of jewel flames emanating voices praising the virtues of Buddhas, radiant. Nets of light intoning the voices of countless Buddhas covered all quarters, the palaces and mansions reflected each other in their glow, lights from jewel flowers clustered into clouds and produced sublime sounds telling of the extensive roots of goodness practiced by all living beings in past times, telling of the names of the Buddhas of past, present, and future, telling of the ultimate path of the vows and deeds carried out by all the enlightening beings, telling of the sublime teachings of the enlightened ones. The manifestation of such magnificent signs revealed that the Buddha was about to appear in the world. Because the kings in that world all saw those signs, their roots of goodness became mature and they all came to the sight of enlightenment desirous of seeing the Buddha. Then the Buddha supreme cloud on the mountain of all virtues suddenly appeared on a big lotus blossom in that sanctuary. His body was everywhere, equal to the cosmos, appearing to be born in all Buddha fields, going to all sites of enlightenment. His boundless pure form was thoroughly pure and could not be outshone by any being in any world, replete with all noble characteristics, each one distinctly clear. His image appeared in all palaces, and all living beings could witness it with their own eyes. Boundless phantom Buddhas emanated from his body, with auras of various colors filling the universe. As on the top of the mountain banner adorned with flowery flames in the sea of fragrant water pure light, in the midst of the great forest circle of branches with jewel flowers, that Buddha appeared bodily sitting there, so did he appear and sit atop every one of the 68 trillion high mountains in the world's supreme sound. At that point the Buddha emitted a great light beam from between his brows. That light beam was called producing the sounds of all roots of goodness, and was accompanied by as many light rays as atoms in ten Buddha fields. That light filled all lands in the ten directions, and if there were any sentient beings with the potential to be harmonized, that light touched them with its radiance and they immediately awoke on their own, ending all feverish confusion, sundering the web of obstruction, smashing the mountains of barriers, clearing away all pollution, developing great faith and resolution, producing excellent roots of goodness, forever leaving the fears of the various difficulties, annihilating all the miseries of mind and body, conceiving the will to see the Buddha and head for omniscience. At that time, all the world leaders and their retinues, countless hundreds of thousands, having been awakened by Buddha's light, all went to the Buddha and prostrate themselves before him. In the great city flame light was a king called Benevolent Mind a joy to behold, he reigned over a million billion trillion cities. He had 37,000 wives and concubines, the principal one being auspicious sign of blessings. He had 500 sons, the eldest being light of great power, who himself had a thousand wives, the principal one being exquisite sight. At that time, the prince light of great power, having seen the Buddha's light, due to the power of the roots of goodness he had cultivated, immediately realized ten kinds of teachings, he realized the concentration of the spheres of the virtues of all Buddhas, he realized all-sided memory power of all Buddha teachings, he realized transcendent knowledge containing a vast store of skillful techniques, he realized the great culture of kindness harmonizing and pacifying all living beings, he realized great compassion whose reverberations are like clouds extending everywhere, he realized the great joy of the Supreme Mind which gives birth to boundless virtues, he realized the great equanimity which is aware of all things as they really are, 
he realized. The great spiritual power of the impartial treasury of extensive skill in means of liberation, he realized the great aspiration which increases power of faith, he realized the gate of brilliant intellectual powers entering into omniscience. Then Prince Light of Great Power, having attained illumination of these teachings, receiving mystic power from the Buddha, looked over the great masses and spoke some verses, saying, The Buddha sits on the side of enlightenment. Pure and clear is his great radiant light. Like a thousand suns emerging. Illumining all over space. After countless billions of ages. Does the guide appear? Now the Buddhas come into the world. Beheld and attended by all. Observe the Buddha's light. It's inconceivable phantom Buddhas. In every single palace. Reposed in true absorption. See the Buddha's mystic powers. Producing clouds of flames from his pores. Illuminating the world with light that has no end. Behold the Buddha's body, with webs of light most pure, manifesting forms equal in number to all. Beings, pilling the ten directions. Ike flower ornament scripture, his wondrous voice pervades the world and all who here rejoice, in the languages of all living beings. They praise the Buddha's virtues. Illumined by Buddha's light, all beings are peacefully happy, all pains of existence cleared away, their minds are filled with joy. See the hosts of enlightening beings, gathering from the ten directions. All emitting crystal clouds. Extolling the praises of Buddha. The enlightenment sight produces wondrous sound, extremely deep and far-reaching. Able to eliminate the suffering of sentient beings, this is the Buddha's spiritual power. Everyone's paying reverent respect, all greatly joyful at heart. Together before the world honored one, gazing at the king of truth. When the prince, light of great power, spoke. These verses, his voice pervaded the world. Supreme sound, by the mystic power of the Buddha. The king, benevolent mind a joy to. Behold, heard these verses and was greatly pleased. He looked at his retinue and said in verse, You should quickly assemble all the various kings, their princes and great ministers, their governors, and the rest. Announce in all the cities. They should beat the great drum, gathering all the people to go and see the Buddha. At every single crossroad, jewel bells should be rung, let wives, children, households, together go to see the Buddha. All the city castles, should be ordered cleaned, raise beautiful banners everywhere, decorated with jewels. Myriad skeins of jewel gauze, music wafting like clouds, beautifully arrayed in the sky, let everywhere be filled. Let the streets be cleaned, showered with beautiful cloth, adorn your jeweled chariots and see the Buddha with me. Each, according to his power, shower ornaments everywhere, all like clouds spreading, filling the whole sky. Lotus canopies of fragrant flames, half-moon jewel necklaces, and countless fine garments, you should dispense them all. Seas of the greatest perfumes, discs of finest crystal, as well as purest sandalwood, all should fill the skies. Garlands of many jewels, ornaments pure and flawless, as well as crystal lamps, Set all of them in the air. Bring them all to the Buddha. With hearts full of joy. Wives, children, retinue, all. Go see the world honored one. Then the king, together with his 37,000 wives and concubines, 500 sons, and 60,000 great ministers, of whom. The chief was power of wisdom, as well as others, a company totaling 77 million billion trillion, went out of the city of flame light, all of them traveling through the sky by the power of the king, their various offerings filling the sky. Coming to the Buddha's place, they prostrate themselves at his feet, then sat to one side. There was also the celestial king banner of good influence from the city beautiful flowers, with a company of 10 billion trillion. There was also the Dragon King Beret Light from the city Ultimate Greatness, 
with a company of 25 billion. There was also the shocking fierce strength from the city supreme diamond banner. With a company of 77 billion. There was also the Gondorf King gladdening site from the city undefiled, with a company of 97 billion. There was also the Titan King contemplation of beret form from the city beautiful sphere, with a company of 58 billion. There was also the Garuda King exercise of 10 bowers, from the city exquisite array, with a company of 99 billion. There was also the Kinara King indestructible qualities from the city playful enjoyment, with a company of 18 billion. There was also the Mahoraga King banner of noble repute from the city diamond banner, with a company of 3 billion hundred thousand trillion. There was also the Brahma King Supreme from the city beret adornments, with a company of 18 billion. The kings from a million billion trillion such cities, along with their retinues, all went together to the Buddha Supreme Cloud on the mountain of all virtues, prostrate themselves at his feet, then sat to one side. Then that Buddha, in order to harmonize and pacify the sentient beings, expounded the scripture universal collection of methods of freedom of all Buddhas of past, present, and future, along with subsidiary scriptures as numerous as atoms in the world, causing all beings to receive benefit according to their mentalities. At that point the enlightening being light of great power, having heard this teaching, attained the lights of the ocean of teachings collected in former ages by the Buddha Supreme Cloud on the mountain of all virtues. That is to say, he attained the light of knowledge of concentration on the equality of all groups of things, the light of knowledge of all truths entering and abiding in the mind in its initial determination for enlightenment, the light of knowledge of the pure eye of the repository of the omnipresent light of all the universes of the ten directions, the light of knowledge contemplating the ocean of great vows of all Buddhas, the light of knowledge of pure action entering the boundless sea of virtue, the light of knowledge of the storehouse of immensely powerful speed heading for the stage of non-regression, the light of knowledge of the sphere of emancipation with the power to appear in any form anywhere in the universe, the light of knowledge certainly entering the ocean of fulfillment of all virtuous qualities, the light of knowledge of the ocean of perfection of the adornment of certain understanding of all Buddhas, the light of knowledge of the ocean of spiritual power by which the boundless Buddhas of the cosmos appear before all sentient beings, the light of knowledge of the states of the powers and fearlessness of all Buddhas. Then the enlightening being light of great power, having attained innumerable such lights of knowledge, imbued with power from the Buddha, spoke these verses. I've heard the Buddha's wondrous teachings. And attain the light of knowledge. Whereby I see the world honored ones. Deeds in days of yore. All the places he was born his different names and physical forms, and his offerings to the Buddhas. All of this I section. In the past he served all the enlightened ones, practicing for innumerable cons, purifying oceans of worlds, giving up his body, without any bound or limit, cultivating supreme action. He purified oceans of lands, ears, nose, head, and limbs as well as his dwelling places. All he gave up, numberless. To purify all worlds. Able in every land. Through unthinkable eons. To practice enlightening acts. He purified oceans of lands. By the power of the vow of universal good, in all oceans of Buddhas, he cultivated innumerable practices, purifying oceans of worlds. As by the light of the sun, we can see the solar orb. By the light of Buddha knowledge, I see the path the Buddha traveled. I see the great pure light of Buddha's ocean of worlds, calmly realizing enlightenment pervading the whole cosmos. I will, like the world honored one, purify oceans of lands, and by the Buddha's spiritual power, practice enlightening ways. At that time the enlightening being light of great power, because he saw the Buddha supreme clouds on the mountain of all virtues and had served him and provided him with offerings, was able to attain understanding there, and, for the sake of all beings, revealed the ocean of the Buddha's past practices, revealed the techniques he employed in the past as an enlightening being, 
revealed the ocean of virtues of all Buddhas, revealed the independent power of attaining Buddhahood at all sites of enlightenment, revealed the pure knowledge which enters into all phenomena, revealed the impartial knowledge of the power and fearlessness of Buddhas, revealed the universal manifestation of the Buddha, revealed the inconceivable mystical metamorphoses of the Buddha, revealed the adornment of innumerable Buddha lands, revealed all the practical vows of universally good enlightening beings, causing as many sentient beings as atoms in a mountain to awaken the determination for enlightenment, causing as many sentient beings as atoms in a Buddha field to perfect the pure land of the enlightened. Then the Buddha supreme clouds on the mountain of all virtues spoke these verses for the enlightening being light of great power. Excellent, magnificent light. Mine of blessings, of wide renown. For the purpose of aiding all beings. You set forth on the road of enlightenment. You've attained the light of knowledge. Filling the universe. Your virtue and wisdom are both great. You shall attain the deep ocean of knowledge. Cultivating practices in a land. For as many eons as atoms. As you have seen me doing thus. So you'll attain such knowledge. It is not those of base deeds, who are able to know these techniques, only by determined effort. Can one purify an ocean of worlds? In each and every atom, cultivating for countless eons. Only such a one is able to adorn the Buddha lands, spending eons in transmigration, for the sake of every being. Without weariness of mind, one will then become a guide of the world, offering support to every Buddha, until the end of time, never getting tired of it, one will attain the highest path. All Buddhas of all times will together fulfill your hopes, you will attend in person, the congregations of all Buddhas. Boundless are the vows, of all the enlightened ones, those who have great knowledge are able to know their means. Great light, you've given me offerings and thereby attained great power, causing beings as many as atoms, to mature and turn toward enlightenment. The great enlightening beings, who cultivate the practice of universal good adorn the Buddha's oceans of worlds, throughout the universe. In that eon of great adornment there were as many small eons as grains of sand in the Ganges river, the human lifespan was two small eons. That Buddha supreme clouds on the mountain of all virtues lived for fifty billion years, after he passed away, there appeared in the world another Buddha, named King of Adornments of the Good Eye of the Transcendent Ways, who also attained true awakening in that great forest circle of branches with jewel flowers. At that time, the youth light of great power, Seeing that Buddha attained perfect enlightenment and manifest the power of spiritual awareness, thereupon attained absorption in Buddha remembrance, called Gate of the Boundless Oceanic Treasury, attained a concentration formula spell called Depths of Truth of the Power of Great Knowledge, attained great kindness called Expediently Pacifying and Liberating All Living Beings, attained great compassion called Cloud Covering All Realms, attained great joy called treasury of power of the ocean of virtues of all Buddhas, attained great equanimity called space-like equality and purity of the real essence of all things, attained transcendent knowledge called pure body of the real cosmos inherently free from defilement, attained psychic power called unhindered light, appearing anywhere, attained analytic power called entering the pure depths, and attained light of knowledge called pure treasury of all enlightening teachings. He comprehended a thousand gates of teaching like these. Then the youth light of great power, imbued with the power of the Buddha, spoke these verses for the benefit of his retinue. Even in inconceivably many billions of eons, an enlightened guide of the world is hard to meet. The beings of this land are very fortunate that now they can see their second Buddha. The Buddha's body emanates great light with physical forms boundless and totally pure, filling all lands like clouds, everywhere extolling the Buddha's virtues, all illumined by the light rejoice. Beings in distress are all relieved, all are induced to respect and kindness. This is the work of the Buddha's power, producing inconceivable clouds of mystic displays, emanating networks of lights of infinite colors, filling all lands in the ten directions, 
these are manifestations of Buddha's psychic powers, from each hair pour appear clouds of light, filling all space, emitting great sound, all dark places are illumined, causing the pains of hells to disappear. Buddha's wondrous voice pervades everywhere, fully producing all sounds of speech. According to the power of being standing. Goodness, this is a function of the teacher's mystic power. Measureless, boundless, the oceans of communities, Buddha appears within each one, expounding the inexhaustible truth for all of them, harmoniously pacifying all sentient beings. Buddha's mystic powers have no end, appearing in every single land, such as the Buddha's knowledge, unimpeded. He attains enlightenment to benefit all beings. You should all be joyful. Dance, delight, and pay respect. I will go with you there. If1secs the Buddha, all miseries will cease. Arouse your minds to seek enlightenment. Kindly care for all living beings. Abide by the great vows of universal goodness. And you'll attain freedom like the king of truth. When the youth light of great power spoke these verses, by the power of the Buddha his voice was unimpeded and could be heard in all worlds, innumerable sentient beings aroused the will for enlightenment. Then the prince light of great power, together with his parents and their company, surrounded by countless millions of billions of trillions of beings, with jeweled canopies like clouds filling the skies, went together to the Buddha king of adornments of the good eye of transcendent ways. That Buddha expounded for them the scripture the pure adornments of the essential nature of the cosmos of realities, with as many subsidiary scriptures as atoms in an ocean of worlds. Having heard these scriptures, that great congregation attained pure knowledge called entry into all pure techniques of enlightenment, attained a stage called undefiled light, attained a sphere of transcendence called showing delightful adornments in all worlds, attained a sphere of expanding action called pure vision with boundless light entering all worlds, attained a sphere of purposeful activity called banner of light of clouds of pure virtue, attained a sphere of constant realization called vast light of the ocean of all verities, attained ever-deepening progressive practice called adornment of great knowledge, attained an ocean of knowledge of high initiates called extremely refined effortless vision, attained an obvious great light called universal shining of light characterized by the ocean of virtues of the enlightened, and attained pure knowledge. Productive of willpower called treasury of faith and resolution of immeasurable willpower. Then that Buddha spoke these verses for the enlightening being light of great power. Excellent, O sea of virtue and wisdom, is your resolve for great enlightenment. You shall attain inconceivable Buddhahood and be a reliance for all living beings. You've produced a great ocean of knowledge, able to fully comprehend all things, with inconceivable subtle skills. You'll enter Buddhahood's endless realm, having seen the Buddha's clouds of virtues, and entered the stage of infinite wisdom, the ocean of all transcendent means. You will fulfill, O glorious one, having attained command of methods, and inexhaustible expressive powers. Practicing various active vows, you'll realize the peerless knowledge. Having produced a sea of vows and entered the ocean of concentration, you'll fulfill great spiritual powers and all the inconceivable qualities of Buddhas. The ultimate realm of truth is inconceivable, your vast, deep faith is already pure, you see the oceans of lands, purely adorned, of all the Buddhas in the ten directions. You've entered into my enlightenment. Practices. The ocean of means I employed in the past. That which my practices purified. This sublime action, you understand. I gave various offerings to oceans of Buddhas. In countless individual lands, as the fruit realized by that practice, such adornments all you see. Over an inexhaustible ocean of immense eons. Cultivating pure practice in all lands. With firm aspiration, inconceivable. You'll attain this mystic power of Buddhas. Giving offerings to all the Buddhas. Adorning the lands, all pure. Cultivating mystic practices in all ages. You'll fulfill the great virtues of Buddhas.
When the Buddha king of adornments of the good eye of transcendent ways had entered extinction, the king benevolent mind a joy to behold also subsequently passed away, and his son light of great power inherited the position of great monarch, in that great forest circle of branches with jewel flowers a third Buddha appeared in the world, by the name of Ocean of Supreme Virtue. At that time, when the sovereign light of great power saw the signs of that Buddha's realization of enlightenment, he went, together with his family and courtiers, his armies and the populace of the cities, towns, and villages, all carrying seven kinds of jewels and precious metals, to that Buddha and presented a great mansion adorned with all kinds of aromatic crystals. Then that Buddha, there in the forest, expounded the scripture the illuminating activity of the enlightening being with the universal eye, along with subsidiary scriptures as numerous as atoms in a world. Then the enlightening being light of great power, having heard this teaching, attained a contemplative focus called universal light of great virtue. And because he had attained the state of mental focus, he was able to know the past, present, and future seas of good and evil of all enlightening beings and all sentient beings. Then that Buddha spoke these verses for the enlightening being light of great power. Excellent, O virtuous light of great power! That you all have come to me with sympathy for all living beings. You've conceived the supreme will for enlightenment. For the sake of all suffering beings, you exercise great compassion to liberate them. You'll be a reliance for all who are lost, this is called the skillful enlightening work. If enlightening beings can, with firm strength, carry out supreme practices unflagging, the highest supreme unhindered understanding and subtle knowledge they will attain. O light of virtue, banner of blessings, abode of virtue, sea of blessings, all vows of universal good enlightening, your great light can enter. With these great vows you can enter, the inconceivable ocean of Buddhas. The sea of Buddha's blessings has no bounds, you can see all by sublime understanding. In the lands of the ten directions, you see infinite, boundless Buddhas, the ocean of past practices of those Buddhas, you can sec, all as they were. Any who dwell in this ocean of means, can enter the stages of knowledge, this is following the Buddhas to learn, surely leading to omniscience. In all oceans of worlds you performed, Various practices for oceans of eons, the ocean of practices of all enlightened ones, you having learned, you'll become a Buddha. As you see in the ten directions all oceans of lands are extremely pure, your land will also be pure like that, attained by one with boundless vows. The oceanic masses at this sanctuary, having heard your vows, all rejoice. All enter the great vehicle of universal goodness, inspired and dedicated to enlightenment in each of the boundless lands all enter practice for oceans of cons by the power of vows able to fulfill all the practices of the enlightening being universally good o children of buddha in that great forest circle of branches with jewel flowers there appeared yet another buddha called universally renowned lotus eye banner at this time the life of light of great power came to an end and he was reborn in the celestial city jewel palace of tranquility, atop the polar mountain, where he became a celestial king called Banner of Undefiled Virtue. He went with the heavenly hosts to see that Buddha, showering clouds of jewel flowers as offerings. Then the Buddha expounded for them the scripture extensive skill in means of liberation with all sided approaches universally illuminating, along with subsidiary scriptures as numerous as atoms in an ocean of worlds. The celestial king and his company, having heard these scriptures, attained a state of contemplation called all-sided treasury of joy, and by the power of this contemplation were able to enter the ocean of the real character. Of all things. Having attained this benefit, they left the sanctuary and went back to their place. End of the First Assembly. End Book 6.